Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Serious Strategy Gamer and we are playing Man the Guns, the new naval expansion of Hearts of Iron 4, uh, where we are playing as Japan and trying to find out whether torpedo warfare is viable. So, uh, in between episodes I did go ahead and reorganize all the navy, all the army, I did advance a couple of days just so I could do that. Um, so I think this time we are talking, we'll be talking a little bit about the strategy that we want to pursue, why we want to do that, have a look at some of the new features, especially the new naval designer, have a look at our legacy fleet and see what we've got there, and then really s try to get kick started on the game. So, well, firstly, um, let's have a look at the designer and our current fleet. So as this is uh, naval centric, uh, let's go ahead and we'll have a look at the fleet first. So. We only have one theatre for now, that might change of course in, in the future, um, and I've gone ahead and rearranged the fleet and that was a lot of work. So, uh, right now we have four basic fleets, uh, each with several task groups. Uh, the first and most important group is the Dai 1 Kantai over here, which does include the Kido Batai task force, the heavy scout group, the second battle fleet, and the first cruiser group and the slow cruiser group. Kido Batai does include three uh, aircraft carriers that we're going to talk about in a second, uh, some heavy battleships. The first uh, heavy scout group does include the Congo class battle cruisers, uh, some of our faster cruisers. The second battle fleet in basically includes a couple of slower battleships um, and heavy carriers, uh, sorry heavy cruisers. Uh, the first cruiser group is a couple of fast cruisers. And the second uh, cruiser group or slow cruiser group does include a various slow cruisers. And we also have two submarine fleets uh, with various with like 30 or 25 uh, submarines each. Um, and we have our support group which does include a couple of destroyer squadrons uh, which we basically want to use for anti-submarine warfare and a mining group of destroyers that are used for mining. We also have some uh, destroyers in reserve. Uh, these are basically somewhat older ships um, that we don't want to really use in our squadron right now. We might upgrade them in the meantime. Speaking of upgrade, uh, let's have a look at the naval interface over here. This is new. So this includes all of the naval variants that we have right now uh, available to us. And you can see it's, it's big. And I'm not sure I like the interface too, too much. Uh, but... I also leave some perks you pretty much have to use this up here. So let's go through our, all of our types um, very quickly. Uh, but I think it's it's a worthwhile effort just to see what we really got. And on the one hand, and really uh, find out some of the new features on the one hand, and also just realize in what a mess Japan is. So uh, we're going to start with the carriers. Uh, you can see we have in principle nine different variants of the carriers. Uh, some of them are outdated. So. The way Man the Guns treats uh, the naval designer is that you always start out from a basic hull. So you could, for example, start out from... Where is the basic carrier, the 1936 carrier hull? So you can create a variant of that. Uh, basically, this is just the hull of the ship. There's nothing in it, just one engine over here. Nothing else. So that ship would not be very useful at all. Now you can add modules. Certain modules are uh, mandatory, I think only this one. Um, and you can basically have to add some hangar space. Hangar space does give you deck size, uh, which means you can park 20 aircraft on this carrier now. Simulated by these little two aircraft over here. Now, of course for a carrier it would make sense to include more hangar space, which would increase the deck size a little bit more. But you don't have to do that. This is a perfectly viable carrier design. It's a very small carrier, um, but I don't think it's a very good one. So it's, it would cost about 5,000 um, costs, industrial point costs. Um, if we, hangar space is, is pretty expensive. You can see that would increase the cost by about, well, let's say 40%. But then again, it would double the deck space. You can also do more of that. You can also add other modules like deck armor, which would, give you a little bit more armor, which is kind of the um, historically the UK uh, way where they used an armored flight deck 
Um, and their carriers were a little bit more resilient, but I think historically speaking, uh, the American design of just maximizing hangar space and getting more airplanes to shoot down anything that comes towards the carrier in the first place was a little bit more successful. There are also uh, various modules where you can only use certain other modules, like an anti-aircraft battery, uh, like radar, which we don't have for now, um, and like secondary guns, which honestly to me don't really make any sense on a carrier, but then again they're not that expensive. 180 production points um, on a cost of 9000, so it's not really that much, but still it, it's questionable to me whether it's, it's really that good. So that's the basic premise over here. Let's have a look at what uh, modules or, or what ships we have. So in terms of pure carriers, on, on a pure 1936 carrier hull, uh, we have already the Sar Sarju class, I want to say, uh, which is basically what you'd expect. It's three uh, deck space or three hangars, which does give us a decent deck space of 60. Um, some anti-air, an engine, some secondaries. I think we could actually go for, for a slightly faster engine, uh, which would, though, increase fuel usage. And you can see fuel usage is pretty massive right now. Carriers really, really gazzle a lot of fuel in this game. So overall, not a bad design. I'm not sure I would have put the uh, secondaries in. Maybe a better engine might have been a little bit nicer. Uh, that would have get, given us a little bit more speed. But, man, it's, it's what we've got. Uh, we can only change that and create variants with naval experience, which we don't have for now. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, these things uh, we cannot build, you can see by this a little bit, because it's basically an empty hull. It's only the thing that you can use to design more ships. We have, however, also, let's uh, have a look at the outdated equipment. Uh, we have also the Roju class uh, fleet carrier, and we actually have one of these in our fleet. Um, which only has two modules for uh, hangars, uh, but it's free on, on the uh, third slot. So what we might, for example, do is upgrade our Roju uh, into a Serrero class and give, us, give it 50% more deck space, which would be pretty good. On the other hand, it does cost about 2,000 um, production points at least to upgrade that. So at least you're paying the difference, plus a little bit more just to get out the material. We've also a couple of more improvised hulls, so converted cruiser hulls and converted battleship hulls. And these are not quite as good as carriers, you can see you can only potentially add up to two uh, deck space on a cruiser hull, and on a battleship hull I think it was three, let me check that. So yeah, you would have the um, capability to add three hangar space, which does look a little bit um, like the like the 1936 carrier, uh, but you can also see it's much, much more expensive to build that. So it's not really viable to use that to build up ships entirely new, uh, but it is viable to use that to upgrade your old stuff. So, what have we got then? Uh, we've got two uh, different variants of a converted battleship hull, so basically old battleships that are now uh, carriers. Um, they are very similar, they both have three deck space, uh, one of them has secondary guns, uh, one of them doesn't. I really don't think it's it's worthwhile to upgrade one into the other. Um, it's basically what we've got. It's a little bit more interesting for the cruisers. Uh, we have the Hoshu, Hosha, Hosho, uh, which only has one um, hangar and, and very, very little deck space, uh, only an engine. This is, I would consider that a, an experimental platform. It doesn't really give you anything. Um, it might be, I, th I think it's somewhat close to the first British carrier that was uh, actually a, con a converted cruiser. Uh, we also have the Sahichu though, uh, which does at least carry uh, two hangars and some anti-air guns and some secondaries. Secondaries I don't care about, but anti-air guns I think are vital. So yeah, I think this um, is much better. Uh, but it's basically also the end of what you can do. Uh, there are no more modules to add except for radar, which is not critical, um, I believe. So, in terms of what we've got, currently we have uh, one Ruju class, we are building one Soju class, and I'm buttering these names, and I'm very, very sorry for that. Uh, we have one converted battleship each, we have one Hosho, Hosho and I think we are building one Soju. So, all in all, uh, that does make for four carriers right now, one proper carrier, uh, two converted ones, sorry, three converted ones, uh, and with us building two more. In terms of battleships, what we've 
God is a little bit um, less diversified. So uh, you can see we have the early heavy ship hull and we could also build ships based on the 1936 uh, ship hull, but we don't really have any naval experience uh, to modif modify any of that. So that's not something that we can do right now. Uh, right now we are only stuck basically with what we've got. And these are the Fuzu and Nagato class. Um, they are basically both just variants of the early ship hull, so basically battleships. Um, they are generally carrying some heavy guns, which are giving you heavy attack, so against other heavy ships, uh, heavy cruisers, battleships, that uh, stuff, fire control systems, engines, some armor, really not, not that much to write home about. Um, well, some scout planes, that's nice, some anti-air, so decent. Uh, the Nagato class is somewhat similar. Uh, it only carries a little bit better, or more modern, or ha more heavy uh, army armament. So the heavy battery over here is a heavy battery of of the technology level two, uh, which does provide much more, a little bit more heavy attack, much more piercing, uh, but at the cost of a lot of speed. So you can see uh, it would be. Yeah, well, basically we are losing a lot of speed uh, with two of these modules. Uh, and that does mean that the Fuzu is capable of 25 knots, whereas the Nagato is a better gun platform, but it's much slower. So uh, we have currently four Fuzus and two Nagatos. The Fuzus are considered out of date, um, but I don't think that's true for us. Um, I personally prefer the speed a little bit, um, so let's re- uh, commission the Fuso class which means it's simply not going to be uh, able to upgrade and it's not going to be bothering me uh, about that thing. We also have the Congo class battle cruiser. It's based on an early ship hull. Uh, you can see there's... really? Oh wait. Ah okay yeah no it would be based on an early ship battle uh, ship hull so it's not displayed over here but um, the it's a very good ship uh, for my taste. It's very very fast. 36 knots. It does carry some decent anti-air guns, uh, two, two modules of that in fact, some secondaries, a good armor, a very good engine, and actually, um, well, decent guns, they're not really upgraded, but um, on the other hand that would decrease our speed. So I'm very happy about this uh, setup over here. The Congo class is I think one of our best ships. Currently we do have three Congo classes in our navy with two more building. The Congo classes are of course in the heavy scout group. Uh, the battleships, so the fast battleships, the Fuzos, um, are in the Kidobutai, whereas the Nagato, the slower but more powerful ones, uh, are in the second battle fleet. Of our carriers, uh, we put the Ruju class in the uh, heavy scouting group. The reason for that being that it is somewhat quicker, 35 knots, um, than the converted battleships hulls, which remember are more expensive but also slower, so 29 knots. And uh, we didn't want to slow down our um, Congo class too much. 36 knots, uh, we are losing some speed uh, due to putting the Ruju class on that, but not too much, two knots basically. Uh, we do also have a variety of heavy cruisers. The heavy cruisers that we've got are very old ones, Abado class, uh, type one class hull, uh, which with very little to go for it. Just some torpedoes, um, a medium battery, which is somewhat decent at, at attacking heavy ships, a little bit okay at um, attacking light ships, although I think that's the secondary gun actually. Some armor, it's not a good, it, it's not a very good ship, it's very old. Um, and then we do have a couple of other ones. Uh, to be honest, they are somewhat similar. Um, you can see they are generally carrying uh, two, uh, two guns of the medium battery caliber, sometimes type 1, sometimes type 2, it's just a matter of, of degrees. Some torpedoes, usually uh, one or two planes, uh, with a, basically the difference uh, being that some of them carry two torpedo tubes, some of them carry one torpedo tube, but two planes, and it's not much of a difference. Um, one of them is a little bit more modern. But importantly, you can see that we cannot build the Mag Magami class or the Tone class because we are limited by uh, our designs. So we right now may only build ships with a cost of up to 5,300 
uh, costs, industrial costs, uh, due to the uh, what Naval Treaty? Which one is it? The London Naval Treaty. Uh, that does limit that. We of course do have the decision to maybe cheat on that. And that is a very interesting one because it would allow us to build cruisers of a caliber of 5,700 uh, costs. So I'm saying caliber, it's a little bit of a shorthand. Uh, but yeah, it would allow us to, to build better guns. The best really starts at the light cruisers, though. Uh, I'm not going to talk about each one of these, but you can see already that we have a pretty large variety of heavy light cruisers. And the light cruisers that we've got start out with the Chukuma class. It's really, really nothing. It's It just has one type of gun, medium type of guns. Um, but successively, they add some torpedoes, some mine rails so that you can send out mines. Then they'll be adding some anti-air and um, anti-air guns and float planes so that you can have better scouting and you know it's it's sort of going like that from each variant to the next uh, that some things are added some things are modernized a little bit and actually uh, the tenue class i realized is exactly the same as the abaru class there's no difference here i don't know why we have two variants of that uh, our most modern ones are generally i would say the kuma class even though it's considered as an uh, obsolete over here, so let's actually recommission that. Um, the right now the ok Okino Okinoshima class. I'm very sorry about that. Um, does carry one battery. It carries some mines. It does carry some anti-air guns, and that's basically it. The Kuma class, on the other hand, does carry a lot of variety of stuff: two guns, some uh, torpedo tubes, uh, also some mines. No plane, uh, but some fire control and some armor. I don't consider this a great ship. Um, this is this is. It it's, how shall I say that? It's a jack of all trades. It has everything. It has mines. It has torpedoes. It has guns. It has some armor. Uh, it doesn't really have anti-air, which is an issue, uh, which we should address at some point. But of course, we would need some uh, naval um, experience to to deal with that. On the other hand, the Okishina, pretty much the same. It, wh why why do you carry mines when you are a gunship? I, I don't quite get this design. Um, I would much rather have specialized to, uh, light cruisers uh, that are either good at anti-air or at, let's say, torpedo attacks or at uh, diminishing other light ships. Right now, we don't really have that. It's, it's a variety of stuff. With the torpedoes, um, it's not quite as bad but somewhat similar uh, we have the very early ones that do carry um, depth charges and torpedoes um, some of them only carry torpe smaller torpedoes um, and the latest ones actually carry again just torpedoes and depth charges so depth charges are good against submarines torpedoes are good against surface ships I would much rather have specialized ships I don't think uh, we'll be hunting for submarines with our fleet destroyers, so eh, we'll have to vary uh, that a little bit. Uh, what I did want to point out though is the Katsuri class, uh, which I kind of like actually, uh, because it's carrying quite a lot of mine rails, um, and that makes it somewhat capable of mining uh, enemy areas. The only weird bit over here is uh, the fire control module. That does add cost, but you know this, this guy only has a, a nominative gun, it doesn't really it's not able to attack anything, so uh, I, honestly that is a little bit wasted. And it's adding 60 cost on a ship that has 820, so you know, removing that would drop cost by quite a bit. It's not quite 10%, but close uh, enough, so yeah, that's the only uh, quarrel I have with that. Other than that, it's fine. Uh, submarines, also a little bit of a mess. Uh, some of them carry a lot of torpedoes, that's good. Uh, some of them carry torpedoes and mines, which is, I guess, okay. And then we have some which just too few torpedo tubes. What do we want to do? I think, uh, of course, we want to build up our and uh, our uh, uh, torpedo squadrons. Uh, what we could build, if we were to build from ground up, uh, we would of course use torpedo launchers too, so they're just simply better. Uh, we'd be fitting torpedo tubes in all the modules where we can fit, fit that in. We would actually need a gun because that's simply required and um, we could think about spending 30 more points just to attack increase the light attack 
Um, but just let's go for the bare minimum now. That would be it. it it's costing about a thousand production costs and it would have quite a lot of torpedo attack, 81. So that is tempting. Uh, we could also think about some anti-air and some other things. That would increase the price by about 10%, but I think that might be worthwhile um, if we would go for that. But we don't really have the points to do that now. The other alternative for our future torpedo carrier uh, would be a cruiser hull. So in that regard, what we would do is use torpedoes. But we cannot quite use that many torpedo launchers, unfortunately. I think we can only actually use two. So it at the serve, you know, it doesn't seem like that good of an investment um, because the torpedo attack is actually lower, and this is already costing 2.5 times as much as uh, the uh, destroyer. But on the other hand, the uh, HP, so the health of that ship, um, is somewhat higher, so it could stay in battle a little bit longer. We could make it a little bit more versatile. We could put more anti-air guns on it. We could also use light batteries, as on the destroyer, uh, but we could also viably go for uh, better light attack, so that would screw up other enemy destroyers a little bit better. That being said, it's much more expensive, so for now I don't think that's worthwhile. Um, but there is, again, just to remember, uh, we do have the ability at some point to use torpedo cruisers, um, and that will be nice, because um, at that point I think we will reconsider whether we'll actually be using uh, cruisers or destroyers, uh, because I don't know exactly what that means. I imagine it unlocks a cruiser uh, that has that is capable of uh, putting more torpedo raids on it. But yeah, that's basically it. So, again, I, th I think the uh, fleet itself should be pretty clear. Uh, the fast battleships together with the uh, most of the carriers, um, the heavy scout group is the battle cruisers with the faster uh, type of cruisers together with the uh, Ruju class battleship, uh, so, sorry, uh, carrier. Uh, the reason why we are actually including the heavy cruisers over here is because while the Congo is pretty good at attacking heavy enemy ships, it doesn't really, uh, it isn't that great at attacking light ships. Um, so we want to have some more uh, light attack. Uh, we don't can't, cannot include light cruisers over here because the, all of them are way too slow. Second battle fleet, again, these are the slower ships. Uh, there's also the pride of our fleet, the Nagato. Um, it's a little bit sad to re relegate that to a secondary role, but it's just what we have to do. And then we have the heavy cruisers. You can see that we could upgrade them either into actual fleet carriers, uh, although that would be quite expensive, um, or into some of the um, newer um, battle, uh, a, a newer heavy cruisers. Uh, but it's kind of expensive to do that right now, and we may not do that due to the naval treaty. Right. You can also see, lastly, uh, on our people that we assigned, and we did of course assign uh, Yamamoto to the battle fleet over here. Yamamoto is an excellent admiral. He's pretty good as he was historically until he was shot down. He's bold, so he does more damage and is faster. Uh, he gets more experience when controlling air power. He's a superior tactician, a spotter, an air controller, and a flight deck manager. He's very well suited uh, for that main fleet. We also have the support, the support group, uh, which does include the admiral Tako. Ta Tagagai, uh, who is a spotter, uh, which is kind of nice because that will allow us to do some things like mine sweeping, mine laying. Also, spotting is pretty good just to spot enemy submarines um, when we get the get to that point. Although I think that is also the destroyer squadron. Destroyer leader. Yeah, hunter killer might be nice, but it's a long way off. Lastly, uh, you can see that we have the submarine fleets. Uh, the submarine fleets include some of our best admirals. Why is that? Uh, Admiral uh, Otava and Admiral Manchikoga are both uh, commanding submarine f fleets right now. Uh, of course, we don't really want to base our um, strategy on submarines, but what we do want to do is, if we have a look at the um, at the <laughs> at the tree for at the experience tree over here, um, you can realize that under Sea Wolf. There would be the, once you have Seawolf, uh, once an Admiral has the Seawolf ability, you can 
unlock the abilities Silent Hunter, Torpedo Reveal Taunt, so that's important for submarines. It's not actually what I'm looking for. What I'm actually looking for is Lancer. That gives Torpedo Screen Penetration plus 25%. Remember, we do get 20, 20 or 25% from the Long Lance Torpedo uh, already. So if we would be able to unlock that, uh, we would get a 50% Torpedo Screen Penetration and then a Torpedo Hit Chance of plus 10%. Uh, or torpedo cooldown ability uh, and that would be brilliant however in order to unlock that we do need seawolf or do we we might also want to go for screen protector oh, that's interesting ah that might be interesting so that's another viable way although we don't really need the screening efficiency oh well uh, either way uh, and the way to do that is to gain experience we do gain experience by uh, being a, to be a sea wolf, uh, you need to have more than 80% submarines in the fleet, so that's the reason uh, why both of these uh, admirals are currently uh, uh, operating the submarine fleets, and that's also the reason why I put the submarines fleet on naval exercises. That should hopefully give us a little bit of naval experience. You can see it's coming in very, very, very slowly, uh, so we need about three days just to gain one experience point. Uh, but that would allow us to slowly build up our uh, capabilities and it hopefully gives these guys experience in that field. I don't know whether you actually need to be in battle, uh, but it would be whooping nice to do that. Uh, we actually have one Admiral who is currently already um, a Sea Wolf. Which we can probably see over here. So this guy, yeah, this guy is already a Sea Wolf, but he is so bad. He's just a level one one attack, one defense, one one everything. He's really not that great. Um, these two gentlemen are pretty good already. Um, some of them have some capabilities that are a little bit wasted, like air controller. But on the other hand, they gain more experience. They uh, have superior tactician or spot already, so that's pretty nice. I think they are a good choice. On the land side, uh, I'm going to go through that a little bit more quickly. Uh, what we basically did is uh, reshuffle our troops. We put them into a fast army which includes all of our cavalry, some uh, all of our motorized divisions, uh, all of our tanks. We used the marines, the one group that we have, uh, in, in addition to some uh, infantry divisions in the special naval landing forces, uh, which we will be sending over here, and I'll talk about that in a second. We have the first army, uh, which simply includes 10 infantry divisions. The second army, which includes two infantry divisions, that's based against China. The first one is against... Uh, the Soviet Union and we have a garrison group uh, that does include well basically these garrison type uh, of infantry units. We also have um, a couple of units and armies in the Pacific theater. All of these are garrisons they are guarding uh, various islands. The yellow armies are basically uh, over here. The brown ones I think over here and the blue ones over here. Uh, pink is uh, are the home islands themselves. So basically they're all guarding that. Uh, the reason why we are using rallying all of our army against uh, the Soviet Union is because we, uh, well, there is one thing that's coming up and that's a decision. That's the decision to test the Soviets. So one of the first things that happened historically in the 1930s before Japan got involved in China uh, was that they faced off against the Soviets. They lost horribly. Um, we don't plan to do that. We hope to uh, win that contest. It's a very limited contest. It's not an all-out war against the Soviets. It's, I expect, um, a, a competition about the area around bloody Vostok, around the Amur River, uh, which it was historically. Um, if we win that, I think we will get some nice bonuses. So we are going to put some forces there. I, I do put all of my forces basically on the Soviet border, simply because I want to uh, avoid them their troops being placed down here and on the other hand we are putting our crack troops so our uh, naval landing forces in that region and you can see that they are right now being redeployed from all over the place i think they were previously in okinawa good that does about settle it for this episode guys um i i was a little bit slower than expected in talking about the ships that we have, but I think it's a good idea just to see what we have right now. A couple of battleships, a couple of carriers. Um, we will be building up some of the things, we will be modernizing some of these things, but of course, the main focus is going to be 
on our torpedo carrier. And that's going to have to wait a little bit. Right, next time we will be um, dealing with the Soviets and then probably go into China. I, I will speed up the uh, speed of the episodes a little bit and I'm probably going to skip, skip uh, through some of the peacetime um, developments. But yeah, I think we want to have a look at the uh, Soviet stuff. We want to have a look at the... Uh, at, at the Chinese uh, war, but of course the main uh, area of interest is going to be the war against the Americans. So, I see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. Do like, do subscribe, do let me know what you think. Very much looking forward to having you around. Bye bye guys.